So in this episode, we're going to talk about how the ATF knows they screwed up and are desperate for Biden's new rule to rescue them. Hey guys, it's Phil with the Minute Man Moment, and this is part four of our series on GOA's explosive findings on the ATF's registry. We've covered Biden's final rule in at least two previous episodes, but we wanna connect all the dots for you so you can see how the anti-gun establishment has actually been coordinating with the expansion of their registry of gun owners. In 1985, the ATF allowed gun dealers to destroy records which were over 20 years old. How nice of them. A lot of gun owners have come to value the thought that their transaction records and background check forms eventually get deleted even if it takes 20 plus years. But on May 21st, 2021, the Biden administration proposed a rule entitled Definition of Frame or Receiver and Identification of Firearms. And in this rule, the ATF decided to reverse its own 1985 rulemaking, allowing for FFLs to destroy records that were older than 20 years. And according to the White House, the final rule requires federally licensed firearm dealers to retain key records until they shut down their business or licensed activity. So this means that all records, all records, will eventually end up in the hands of the ATF's registry. That means no records after August 24th, 2002 will be destroyed. Instead, they'll end up being controlled by the ATF. And as if that weren't bad enough, Biden's new rule will also expand homemade firearms to this gun registry. So before this rule, the only firearms that would end up in the registry were firearms you purchased less than 20 years ago from a gun seller who went out of business. Once the rule gets implemented though, all firearms you purchased since August 2002 will go into the registry with your name, address, and your social security number. The ATF's authority to accept out of business records is only allowed by the Firearms Owners Protection Act, which does allow receiving records from a discontinued licensee. Not saying I like it or it's constitutional, but that's just what it is. But an ATF ruling provides a process for active firearms dealers to send their firearm transaction records to the ATF prior to business discontinuance. And here it is. It is strongly recommended that upon reaching 20 years, those electronic firearms acquisition and disposition records be either permanently maintained by the licensee or forwarded to the ATF Out of Business Records Center for preservation. Apparently for years, these records older than 20 years have been sent to the ATF by active firearms dealers and were kept at the Out of Business Records Center even though they weren't the records of the out of business FFLs. They shouldn't have been doing that. According to an ATF order, the Bureau even obtains a written statement from the gun dealer that clearly states that they are not going out of business and are only sending in records greater than 20 years old. These records are apparently being kept as part of an inspection record and processed as if they were out of business records, even though they are not out of business records. And in a different ATF order, the Bureau attempted to legitimize this arbitrary behavior by stating, where a business is discontinued and succeeded by a new licensee, the records may be delivered to the successor to maintain or they must be delivered to the National Tracing Center. But the ATF is actually misrepresenting the statute as written. Congress actually said that the records required to be kept by this chapter shall be delivered to the successor. There is no or in this statute. In other words, ATF has requested and received firearm transaction records from active FFLs with no statutory authority to do so and despite varying statutory prohibitions on its collection of such records. ATF has no business strongly recommending to FFLs that they turn in records to ATF's illegal gun registry before they go out of business, nor inserting exceptions into a statute where Congress didn't put one there. And what may be most atrocious about this expansion of the gun registry is how useless it is at stopping crime, and the ATF knows it. In 1985, the ATF determined that relatively few requests for traces of guns involved transactions older than 20 years. And accordingly, a 20-year record retention period would not have a significant impact on the ATF's capability to trace crime-related firearms. ATF instituted this rule knowing it would result in a loss of their ability to trace approximately 14% of all firearms each year. So the ATF believed in 1985, with its 20 year retention period, that it was an acceptable loss to only be able to perform 86% of traces. So what changed? Other than the recent crime wave, which has put political pressure on the president to do something, 
the ATF now has the power of the internet. In the 1980s, they didn't have the capabilities to wield their power effectively. But with the internet, they can summon the location of all American gun owners with the click of a button. We also know the ATF's ability to trace has gone up exponentially because the ATF admitted it in their letter to Congressman Michael Cloud that in 2021, they received 548,186 firearm trace requests. And that's with the rise of so-called ghost guns. But the White House dishonestly framed the situation as a crisis because 1,300 firearms a year are untraceable because the federally licensed firearms dealer destroyed the relevant records that were more than 20 years old, like the law allows them to do. So if 1,300 trace requests aren't possible because records need to be destroyed after 20 years, and there were 548,186, that means only 0.2% of all trace requests are unable to be completed by the ATF's 20-year retention policy. So according to the ATF in 1985, 14% of requests being untraceable is no big deal. But according to the ATF in 2022, 0.2% is the reason for the current crime wave. I call Bolshevik. President Biden's new record retention policy is not about tracing more guns or solving crimes. It's about retaining all firearm transaction records into a digital searchable registry. And it's no secret. During the 1985 rulemaking process, one commentator even advocated for a 10 year retention period to allay fears that the record keeping will be used as a database for future firearm registration. This guy was obviously onto something. And if you're still out there and watching this video, let us know in the comments. Hopefully all this information has made you deeply concerned. The good news is Gun Owners of America is on top of this and is going to be absolutely suing the Biden administration. But there's one more thing that we can do. Action through the courts is a long process we're looking for legislative action. On our final episode, we'll talk about what we plan on doing with our allies in Congress and what you can do to stop the ATF's gun registry.